Did you see this clip with the Father Edward Beck talking about Jesus being a Palestinian Jew? The story of Christmas is about a Palestinian Jew. Now, how often do you find those words put together? A Palestinian Jew born into a time when his country was occupied, right? They can't find a place for her to even give birth, his mother. They're homeless. They eventually have to flee as refugees into Egypt, no less. I mean, you can't make up the parallels to our current world situation right now. It's true. You don't hear the words Palestinian Jew, even though that's what many people have been all through Jewish history. And, you know, I was saying um, it's clear that most of the people of Palestine were still Jewish as late as the 7th, 8th century AD. And it was only very slowly over time that people converted to Islam, right? But they didn't all convert to Islam. Uh, some were Christian and some continued to be Jewish, right? Right down to modern times, there have always been some Jewish people in Palestine who have just been there for some since time immemorial. They never left. And for most of, of the history of Palestine, they coexisted peaceably with neighbors and often with That's relatives. another myth. That's another myth that, that Jews and Muslims just always fought and it's inherent. And innate, Absolutely not. And Absolutely not. Yeah. No. And, and we should be clear, when you were under the rule of an Islamic state like the Ottoman Empire, people were not treated equally. It was not a modern, liberal, egalitarian state. We shouldn't uh, have any illusions about that. But the society was structured and run in such a way so that people could coexist and they could trade and live with and cooperate with one another peacefully. And that was the pattern for hundreds of years. And one of the really interesting points that came up when I was reading about this, these early moments in Zionism is that these European ethnographers going to Palestine would say, you know, all the place names, towns, rivers, lakes, they're all Hebrew. And there are all these place names referring to biblical stories uh, of, of the ancient Israelites. It's all there. And when you go to the sacred places, there are shrines and tombs relating to biblical patriarchs and prophets. And there are cemeteries. You know, cemeteries are very important in the Middle East. And these cemeteries were mixed Jewish and Muslim. And people would go there and they'd point to their, their ancestors, their relatives, who were Jews and Muslims. These families were mixed, you know, and partly uh, because because people would convert, but not everybody would convert. And they'd continue to be relatives. They'd continue to know each other as family or as neighbors, as villagers, uh, both Muslim and Jewish and Christian as well. Right. And we have to remember still today, a large portion, a significant portion of Palestinians are Christian. And there's a very deep Christian history obviously, Bethlehem and in Gaza, too. Right. So, you know, this is another case where people like to imagine, oh, it's these two groups who hate each other, and it's a thousand years old feud, and uh, they've always hated each other and been killing each other. No, this is, this is a situation that arose in modern times because of modern changes, because of the breakdown of the Ottoman Empire and that social system and the rise of nationalism. And a lot of these churches have wings in Palestine. You know, this is another odd aspect of the history is that, you know, pa Palestine is, is a holy place for Christians as, as well as Jews and Muslims. And all of these, you know, the Roman Catholic Church, the Greek Orthodox Church, the Armenian Church, the Anglican Church, they all have missions outposts of some sort in in Israel and Palestine especially in Palestine right where you have Bethlehem and they're talking to people they know they're hearing from people they know who can tell them firsthand about the horrors and and that's another aspect of what's happening now also in Israel is that there's this uh further inflammation and outbreak of violence towards Palestinians and also towards Christians in general. There's been, you know, attacks and uh, shutting down of Christian pilgrimage sites. You know, it's this it's this kind of uh, very modern form of Zionism, which is ultra-nationalist and ultra-religious, which would have been a contradiction in terms 100 years ago. You know, those things were seen as opposite. Zionism is secular. Zionism yeah. rejects this, you know, Talmudic, exilic way of life. 
uh, and most ultra religious Jews tended to be anti Zionist. But now there's this weird melding, right? And especially the settler movement is kind of this crucible where people are combining this sort of biblical fundamentalist form of Judaism, which is very anti traditional, with ultra nationalism. And they're, you know, and it's mobilizing this religious identity for a national project. And that, you know, can't tolerate the existence of Palestinians. And it also can't really tolerate the existence of Christianity in Israel either. And so there's hostility uh, on both of those fronts. Right. We did a video on this the other day um, that Deputy Mayor of Jerusalem saying that there were no churches or no Christians in Gaza. And she said that to cover for the Israeli uh, killing of a mother and her daughter uh, who were seeking shelter in a church and they were shot by snipers. So her solution to, to saying that was that actually there are no Christians or churches in Gaza. Of course, to the extent that she's right, Israel is playing a part in lowering those numbers. And you also had Hodoritz from Commentary Magazine. Did you see this going around? The executive editor of Commentary Magazine openly calling for the destruction of an entire population. It's apparently okay to call for the erasure of an entire people so long as they're Palestinians, not Jews. I'm speechless. What he's quoting is Abe Greenwald, who quote tweets an article, and the article is a New York Times guest essay. It's, I'm Gaza City's mayor. Our lives and culture are in rubble. And Abe Greenwald tweets, hallelujah, they should be in rubble. The only hope for a worthwhile future in Gaza depends on the total elimination of its fetid past. And then there's another one I want to share from Poderitz. Kenneth Roth from Human Rights Watch tweets out, it is not a Merry Christmas in Gaza. And John Poderitz writes, yeah, they're Muslim, so. Wow. <laughs> That's amazing. And the ignorance, I mean, you could say, well, people are amazingly ignorant about the Palestinians and about Muslims and Arabs in general. But it's more than that. It's a willful ignorance, right? It's a decision to be ignorant, to 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 not see them as people with a society, a way right. of life, a history, right? And you know, this is this is part of where history is so important, right? Didn't one of those tweets that you showed? I think it was Greenberg said, um, "It depends on eliminating their past, right?" This part of what you have to do to destroy a people is to destroy their history. Total so it's, elimination of its fetid past was what he said. Disgusting, yeah. To say that yes. they have no, they have no past, they have no history, they have no traditions, they have nothing to carry on. That is really classic, you know. And this is, this is the same thing people do when there's a set of people that are politically inconvenient for you, and you want to eliminate them. You first. You eliminate their their existence right. as a people, which it, which is historical, right? Which is a historical evolution, and it's not surprising. I mean, if you if you talk to an ordinary American, or in my experience, if you talk to an average Israeli too, for that matter, they don't know anything about who the Palestinians are. They don't know where they come from. They don't know how they live, what they believe. And they don't want to, right? Yeah. That just complicates things. It's and then better. At the same time, they know nothing, and then claim they don't exist and they're not real. Yeah, like, hold yeah. In my ear. Yeah, yeah. And this this was a controversy. And you know about Alan Dershowitz. <laughs> I'm sure you know all this, uh, all this backstory. But this was this was an idea that certain propagandists put forward in the 1980s and 90s that, like, Palestine was empty. There was like yeah. nobody there. And um, and then Israel's you know, found Israel Israeli mythology right says uh, Palestine was a land without a people for people without a land. Yeah, yeah. Which obviously the early Zionists knew very well that was not true. Right. But right? this is unfair. this is the mythology that right. has had that's been manufactured. Right. Is there was nobody there. There was no people. No history. No culture. And yeah. uh, and if there are Palestinians there, they're just interlopers. Right. They yeah not uh, taking care of the land. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Also, yeah. Which, you know, obviously this is this is all absolutely upside down and backwards, right? It was yeah. Palestinian people there for centuries who made the land productive, you know, and who 
made it in in some ways a prosperous country, as prosperous a country as you can in that environment, right? Yeah. And obviously Israel is a country with wealth today. And some of that credit goes to, you know, is the ingenuity and work of Israelis. I don't want to deny that. But also a lot of it goes to the billions of dollars that's pumped in there yeah, <laughs> mainly from the yeah. United States. Like yeah. it, it's and, like, and the Palestinians did it without that funding. I want to go back to that course. priest because he got so much hate. Lots of people were very upset about what that priest said. Yeah, Although, how dare you say Jesus yeah, was a Palestinian? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, was, yeah uh, classic. There's a there's a New York Post article. Priest slammed for saying Jesus was Palestinian Jew in occupied country in CNN interview. He got really slammed from lots of people, including Avi Kinnear, who says, we have all heard you on CNN today claiming that Jesus was a Palestinian Jew and comparing his plight with Palestinians today being forced to flee into Egypt. Shame on you for inciting hate reminiscent of blood libels. And then Beck replied, sorry, you heard what you want to hear, but my message was one of unity and solidarity with both Israel and with suffering Palestinians. The more we accentuate our differences, the less love there will be in the in the world. It's kind of hard to see how that is blood libel, what he said. Um, yeah, I, don't, then, I don't follow the logic. <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. Eric Erickson, the conservative, says, how can the press signal itself not really connected to the people? Put on commentary like this, Palestine was not even a creation of the Roman Empire at the time of Christ's birth. Pushing a political agenda like this using Christ reflects poorly on the network. Uh, GOP strategist Steve Guest wrote, the war on Christmas is even more pernicious this year, courtesy of CNN. Merry Christmas from CNN versus media podcast host Stephen L. Miller quipped. And then also, I'm reading from Jerusalem Post, to say that he is making up history, I think, would be an understatement. Newsweek's senior editor at large, Josh Hammer, said about Beck's statement on CNN in a Tuesday segment on Newsmax. Newsmax, Jesus, let's be very clear, was a Jew who was born in Judea. He was born at least 130 prior to the Roman purge by Emperor Hadrian of the Jews and the renaming of the region so-called Palestine. So to say that he that he has his facts wrong, again, that is a remarkable understatement. You know, this this is something that I encounter all the time, which is like uh, when when you put forward a historical narrative that people don't like, they zero in on terminology. They find like, oh, you used the wrong term, you used the wrong word. And it is technically true that the Roman Empire began using the name Palestine in I think 135 or 136. So prior to that, it was still usually called Judea. Uh, clearly when this clergyman Beck, when he says Jesus is a Palestinian Jew, he's clearly trying to call your attention to the, the parallels and the repetition, right. the fact that this is the same country and certain people are, are being repressed because someone else wants to control that territory. Like, but picking on the terminology is obviously a way of avoiding yeah. the historical parallels and, and repetitions that are being pointed out. And we have to be careful. This is, you may have seen the controversy with Masha Gessen as well. Yeah. Um, Which you know, compared, uh, the, the uh, Gaza to the Warsaw ghetto. Yeah. Yeah. To a ghetto in Eastern Europe, which, uh, it is very similar. Yeah. And you're, you know. And Norman so, Finkelstein did that, and his parents were in the Warsaw Ghetto. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, and he, he draws a lot of parallels to yeah. the resistance of Palestinians to the Warsaw Ghetto. And, you know, historical parallels, they're like metaphors, right? The two things are never exactly identical. Right. There's always differences, nothing repeats itself. You know, as we, as we all know, Mark Twain said, history doesn't repeat itself, but it rhymes, right? Yeah. It doesn't repeat exactly the same way. But part of how you make sense of the world and part of the point of history is to understand recent events in the light of the past. You know, that if, you, if you're not allowed to do that, then you're, yeah. you're almost abolishing history. You're almost saying, it, yeah, we, we can't learn from the past. The past does not clarify what's going on today and that is the position that israel's supporters have now taken with regard to this question of of israel's conduct you're not allowed to point out similarities right. 
to what's been done to, to Jews, you know, certainly when it comes to the Nazis and the Holocaust, but even beyond that. But allowed you to, are allowed to wear the Jewish star, that the Nazi Jewish star. You're allowed to compare yourself to the victims, but never to the Nazis. So you're allowed to compare, like the ambassador showed up at the UN wearing a yellow star, the Nazi mm -hmm. patch for Jews. I mean, that's what's so rich. And Norman Finkelstein is talking about this. But these people say you can never compare anything to the Holocaust, except we're going to do that all the time. Yeah, as long as we're seen as the victims. And, right. you know, when October 7th happened, you know, there there were horrible atrocities, murder of civilians, torture. I don't think anyone hesitated in comparing that to the Holocaust. I think many people, people said, yeah. this is the biggest day a lot of, of, said that, of violence against Jews since Jews the Holocaust. Since the Holocaust. I think that was, a, that was a bad comp. Like I thought that was a bad comparison. And Nora Erekat was on my show and she said that because I was comparing like, this wasn't about this. I mean, this they weren't like, we want to kill Jews. Like they were killing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Israelis. I'm not justifying what happened on October 7th, but they were not like, they did not have a genocidal, I don't think, ideology behind them. It wasn't kill all Jews. Jews are uh, an Uber mention. Yeah. It was political. It was political. Yeah. But th I don't remember anyone jumping in and saying, you're not allowed to make comparisons right. to the Holocaust. No. In reference to that. Know. It's only the actions of the Israeli state where you're, that's when you're not forbidden. Yeah. That's not allowed. They right. basically, they get a free pass right. <laughs> you know, in effect.